it was a long, long road to come back home. When there is a very real possibility you will never make it home. I know these are hard times for you and your family. Every prayer, well wish. California, New York, Illinois, Wisconsin, just all over. Each gesture of kindness. This plant came from Alaska, so. Means a lot. We believe in miracles because we see her. Lori Gann has always felt most at ease with her boys. Trying to get back to normal. And they tower over her now, but nowhere feels completely comfortable anymore. You can't change the way <clears throat> we look at her. I don't see the scars, I just see that she's here. The joyful face, that's yeah. what it is. The beautiful face, mm -hmm. which, you know. Can you feel that way still about yourself? Not yet, <laughs> no. I've been there almost four years. Lori says she never worried much about going to work in the prison kitchen. Her family did every day. I got woken up at 6.47. I didn't believe it. Investigators say an inmate attacked her with unspeakable brutality. The first thing you know, she's going to make it through this to start with. Twice it was reported that Lori had died. Many times she came close. You can see the pain and everything with tubes and just, I don't know, it's just the worst experience I've ever felt or seen. I would never want anyone else to ever feel like ever. For days, her condition was fragile at best. When Lori could finally communicate by writing a question. But one of the things that she wanted to know early on was uh, about Mary, Mary Ricard. Her friend and coworker was killed right in front of her. Lori's face is partially paralyzed from the deep cuts to her cheek, neck, and ear. Her hands are scarred from fighting back. She fought back. Did what I had to for my kids. So. If Lori hadn't tucked her chin to protect her throat, she probably would have died too. I think this was because I went like that and he went straight up like that. I got my whole face. Lori Gann says she remembers everything that happened behind the barbed wire fences and brick barriers. Soon she'll tell investigators and likely a courtroom one day too. For now, it is enough, almost too much, just to think about. Do you feel more sad or more angry? I'm more angry. Just the why? Just, yeah. I just don't think it should have happened. But. The past stubbornly exists. It's part of me now, so. Lori doesn't want the worry she feels to cement her future. With one son in college, another starting soon, Lori says she will need more of the support that's come from all over. These are a couple from the inmates. Including the inside. Sergeant Gann, you have always been respectful and kind to me. That really meant a lot. You know, that they'd even write. Do you think you'll go back? I don't I haven't decided. <laughs>Rob says he's taking on what feels like the injustice system, learning how few rights unmarried biological dads have in Utah. Almost five years ago, he and his longtime girlfriend, Carrie Terry, found out they were pregnant and they planned to get married. Probably the happiest day of my life. You weren't even talking about adoption. Oh, absolutely not. No, no. When did that change? That changed um, one Sunday uh, when she had come back from her church service and stated to me that she would need to adopt this child to a Mormon family. 
That conversation ended the relationship and started Rob's fight to be a dad. And I stated from that day on, there's no way I will allow my daughter to be adopted. I will fight for her no matter what. He filed a paternity action in Colorado District Court before his daughter's birth. Colorado established his rights. His concerns grew with emails from the birth mom. If you truly were concerned about the well-being of this child, you would do the right thing and consent to an adoption in lieu of being a chromosome donor. She wrote that they could talk more later. Then she did not show up for a Colorado court hearing. Rob had no idea she was in Utah court that same day. She She'd given birth early and was giving consent for an adoption knowing he was adamantly against it. Not only did she know Rob wanted to be involved with this child, but she took the steps to deceive and really perpetrate fraud on not only the Colorado courts, but the Utah courts. And to make matters worse, she's provided this child to her sister and brother-in-law. So she just doesn't want Rob to be involved in this child's life. The birth mother's lawyer sent a statement that reads in part, Carrie knew the child would be best served and her needs would be satisfied by having two parents in a stable and peaceful home. This has proved to be true and she opposes any disruption of the adoptive placement. Colorado has jurisdiction over your child and eventually that'll be recognized. Yeah. There are dads like Rob all over the country accusing Utah of intentionally making it difficult for them to protect their rights when they oppose adoption. Even a Utah judge found the mother deceived the court. Still, the adoption was not overturned. Time went on and on and on. Well, I found that I was in for a, a battle across two states that has taken now um, a lot of money, $170,000 and uh, almost four years of my daughter's life missed. The Utah Supreme Court has just ruled that his rights in Colorado should not have been terminated. <laughs> The first unmarried biological dad to win a ruling in Utah ever. Now more hearings and appeals. Rob still does not know if or when there could be a reunion. She's now lived almost four years in one home. That's all she knows. How much do you think about how difficult that transition, traumatic that transition could be? It is going to be hard on her, but is it going to be harder? Is it going to be harder now or will it be harder when she's 18 years old? when she had reads through these documents and says, why didn't you allow me to be with my father? Why did you take me from him? You ready? Ready to wash your hair? You can never get time back, especially times like this. Where's daddy? Brilliant, brilliant. Boo! Rob Manzanares knows that in a way he wishes he didn't. No, no, don't get daddy. No! Cheryl Preheim, Nine News. <laughs> <You're serious. laughs> With each effort and every kind gesture, oh, you were so kind. optimism is growing in a place that has been so short on hope. Haiti has felt forgotten. A lot hotter than Denver. We're cooking. Dave Oletsky is building under a hot sun, even though he could argue there's plenty of work to do at home in Denver. In a lot of ways, it's the same. In a lot of ways, it's completely different. Two rows over, a former president follows the identical blueprint alongside the one he says has been boss for 66 years. A pretty professional carpenter by now. <laughs> <laughs> you can direct the team. <laughs> well, she does. <laughs> we all took off our hard hats for a bit so the Carters could share some news. News about Dave's neighborhood. We are very excited to come to Denver because uh, the people in, in Colorado are so eager to help other people. And I think uh, to come to Denver is going to be an exciting thing for all of us. Colorado is the choice for next year's Habitat for Humanity and Carter Work Project. The Carters will be there, Garth Brooks and Trisha Yearwood too. 22 new houses will go up, dozens more repaired. 2,300 miles and a world of circumstance separate Laogon, Haiti, and Denver. But the hope for a better life, a safe place, dignity, is no different. A decent place to stay and then just a little bit of self-respect. It's pride in something that you've done yourself. Uh, a little bit of hope for the future. The Globeville neighborhood has felt forgotten too, tucked beneath towering highway overpasses. People just pass by it. 
They just never even took a, a second look. Soon Globeville will be seen as never before and will always be changed because of it, just like Haiti. It's just unbelievable. It's like, you know, one minute he's in Haiti and then he's coming to Globeville. That there is space and light and phenomenal beauty. A moment to breathe. And I would hope a little bit of peace after the madness of London and the games. A chance, finally, for a little family time. Gorgeous. What the oh, fun? Are you kidding? This is like a dream. An escape is waiting thousands of feet over the English countryside. It feels like you're in a totally different world out here. It's just so peaceful and so relaxed. And it's a very big balloon. And we got to like pull it out at the beginning. And it was so cool. Franklin is a 17-year-old high school senior who still loves to hang out with her mom and dad. It's so nice just to be able to be with them after not seeing them for so long. 30 tons of air inside it as a mess. Not I have no idea how big they were. I mean, I knew they were huge, but they're really, really big. <laughs> in a foggy valley in Leeds Village, no one is asking for an autograph. So it's awesome to just kind of come away. And asking questions about what's next, college or going pro. Are you so proud of me? What? I killed a spider by myself last night. In your room? Yes. yes. There, it was on my bear and I was like, Ugh. If it clears quickly, soon we'll go for a flight. If it doesn't... So even as the fog refuses to lift and covers their chances to drift so high over the fields... Well, I'm bummed we can't actually go up, but it was just awesome like, watching the process. Their escape is not lost. Better safe than sorry. It has already happened. I don't think you really realize how crazy the city is and like how kind of everything is about the Olympics like while you're in it. But as soon as you get away from it, you're just like, oh my gosh, like, it is totally crazy there. It's what the pool has taught the Franklins over so many years. Six Sometimes it doesn't go as planned. Sometimes it exceeds every 30. hope you have ever had. But if you love the journey and who you're traveling with, it is always a win. It has been 36 terribly difficult hours for the community impacted by the High Park fire, but for all Coloradans who love and appreciate the forest that brings such beauty to our state. It is the very thing that draws people to Colorado, 24 million acres of majestic forest. People can't help but visit and take in the beauty for a day, for a weekend, for a lifetime. It is the reason some want nothing more than to live in homes tucked between the trees. On so many days, it brings serenity and peace. But it takes just one day like this to steal all of that and replace it with uncertainty, fear, and loss. In a way, living in the Colorado mountains is a metaphor for human life on Earth. Beautiful, glorious, unpredictable, and at times so frightening. In the end, it is life in a place we love on the good days and the bad. Together, we hold on to hope that no matter how destructive and terrible one day like this can be, it will be followed by better ones. This is Cheryl Preheim, and for all of us at Nine News, good night. <laughs>